Right, moving on to the bases. I made my bases out of this stuff. It's cake bases. You know the stuff that you get your Christmas cake on and wedding cakes? It's cheap, easy to get hold of, most supermarkets stock it, and it's dead easy to work with. Important thing, always make sure you obviously take off the silver foil. Yeah, peels really easy. Strip it down, and what you'll be left with is something like this. Don't worry if you've got little bits of paper left over, it's not an issue. We'll sand them down when it comes to actually covering it and building the earthworks up on it. Now the other good thing about this stuff is it's MDF, which means that it's dead easy to cut. I mean you can cut it with a kitchen knife. Now, what we're going to do is, I've got various shapes here, but I need two foot by one foot sections. So I'm going to start sticking a couple of these sections together. Right, let's crack on. Right, I've got two one foot square cake bases. I'm going to put them together to make a two foot by one foot base. What I'm going to use, using masking tape, PVA. Working on the bottom base of the bases, and this is the part which has the really rough texture on, simply line them up, get your masking tape, Now this is only really to hold them until what you call it, until the glue's dried while we put everything together. So you don't have to be too fancy with this and it's going on the bottom so don't worry. Strip across the middle and that's mainly to stop the glue slipping through as we turn them over. Okay, so there we are. Turn it over. And if you lift it up, you get a crease straight down the middle there. What I'm going to do, get your PVA. Remember, it's only got to hold it in place while we're building it together. What will actually hold the boards together once it's finished is all the earthworks we're going to build on top of it. So simply do that. When that's dry, that will hold more together, we'll be able to plan out a design and start cutting it out. Right, now the boards have dried, I've mapped out a quick, what you call it, plan of what we're going to do on it. This one's quite simple, two communication trenches running backwards, entrance one side, entrance the other side, fire steps and a heavy weapons pit. This area here is what's going to be covered with the foam. We're going to slope it, and it's got to be at least six, seven inches to make sure the slope isn't too steep. Now I've got that measurement from my plan. I wouldn't have known that unless I did a plan. This thin bit along here is actually going to be the beveled edge of the base. So in a minute, what we're going to do is we're going to cut the base down. We're going to cut along this bottom line here, and then once we've cut along that, we're going to bevel this inch wide gap ready for the foam to come up to it and fit flush with it. I highly recommend drawing out your watch toilet maps before you start cutting foam or cutting bases just so you can get your models and once again confirm yes they are going to fit on there you are going to be able to move them about you're not going to have problems like I said there's nothing worse than sending ages making terrain you can't use. Right we'll go on to the cutting next Right, now we're going to shape the board. We're going to cut down the straight and then bevel the edges. Now this stuff is really easy to work with. I mean if you have a look at this, this is actually made out of exactly the same stuff. Yeah, just simple cake base. Cut round, sand it down, exactly the same board. Brilliant terrain piece. Doesn't work, warp. Sturdy. It's going to do you brilliantly. Now before I carry on, important thing to mention, we're working with MDF, and MDF is a fibrous material. And the problem with that is it breaks up into lots of little fibres and it irritates the skin, the eyes. And really we should be doing this in a well ventilated room, preferably outside. Long sleeve t-shirts, gloves, even a mask. Now I'm just going to do this little bit inside for the purpose of filming, but the rest of the stuff I'm going to be doing outside. 
Right, before we continue, I need to bring you a quick message from the people at Please Don't Sue Me for Your Dumbass Mistake.com. Knives are sharp, take care, and if you do cut yourself, don't blame me for being a muppet. Right. This stuff you can cut with next anything really. I mean, if it's got a serrated edge, it'll cut it. Best one I recommend is a coping saw. Cuts through it like butter, but you can also use a hobby saw or even a steak knife. It's this easy. Yeah, remember I'm cutting at the watch cut far edge and not the edge where the foam meets. Nice and clean, as you can see. Follows the contour, takes a couple of seconds. Right, I'm going to work through the rest of this. It's as simple as that. Cut all the way through, and all you're left with is a nice, clean profile. All the way along. And what we're going to do next is we're going to trim this down. So just shake off the excess, place it back down, you're using something like a steak knife or a hobby knife, all you're going to do is literally take steps out of it. Now you're not trying to get this so it's perfectly smooth, we'll sand it down, all you're trying to do is just take off the rough edge and give it a bit of a bevel. I find the best way of doing this is in two cuts, and if you imagine, the first cut is going to go down and literally just cut off the tip. The second cut is going to come across like that and bevel it more, and that will give you a nice smooth edge so you can just sand it off. Once you've done a bit of beveling, you've got a rough edge on, next thing we're going to do is sand this down. Right, sanding. Absolutely simple to do. All I've got is a bit of sandpaper wrapped around a sanding block, so it's easy to handle. Yeah, come down to your piece, and all you're going to do is rub over it. Circular strokes will wear it down very quickly and it's a good way of taking sort of ridges off. Long strokes will smooth it out. As you can see, what you're left with is a lovely beveled edge. Yeah, so when you put them on the board games table, they'll sit nice and flush to the edge, and your models will naturally go up and then up the natural slope. Okay, next, after we've got them all beveled off, we're going to start building up the actual earthworks. And this is the bits that are going to go there, and they're going to go there and actually make the ramparts, so to speak. Right, we've finished off shaping and then sanding down the edges of all the four boards and we've got the basic layout ready for the earthworks, the polystyrene earthworks to go on top. Now a good stage, and not just at this stage but all the way through, is just get your models and your boards and put them next to each other, make sure the edges meet, make sure the trenches will actually line up. Simple as that. 